Well, it's a beautiful drive out of here, but it's a long, very slow one because the road is so bad. You got to watch out for the rocks that are sticking up that'll bend your trailer axle because the trailer axle is kind of low. And sometimes I got to put it down into four wheel low to get up these hills, these little hills. Looks like I'll make it up this one in just four wheel drive. But the worthwhile camping spots, that's where they are, is at the end of roads like these. And this is just really rocky. It's okay for the car, kinda. But it's the trailer and what's inside that suffers. <laughs> it's places like this where if you're not super careful, you bend or break leaf springs. We do carry a spare leaf spring these days. But I wouldn't want to have to go through all that work of doing that out here. Currently on Highway 2 between Whitehall and Butte. And we're heading west. We're coming up to Pipestone Pass. Oh, the fall colors are just beautiful. Okay, no more locking hitch pins for me. This one is similar to what I had on the bike, on the bike rack, and I just think that something down here work hardened and busted off. But uh, yeah, no more of these for me. Well, from Butte, we were headed to Phillipsburg, Montana, so that we could go to the ghost town up above Phillipsburg, but the highway to Phillipsburg was closed. Yeah, just closed. So now we're going from Anaconda to Wisdom, Montana, and this is just too beautiful not to video. It's gotten quite windy, so whatever camp we find for the night has got to have some shelter. There's a frontal system moving through and it's supposed to rain tomorrow. You know, frequently I ask Linda for things to talk about in the videos that we make and this is what she had to say about that. Well, Rick, you need to be careful what you ask for. Um, like you're asking, we need to have things to talk about in our videos. Well, God heard you and he said, zap. 
um, alternator light goes on and off. Um, bike rack falls off. <laughs> all, all those things. Stop asking for content. Because God hears. And he provides. <laughs> yep, that's what Linda said. Well, we're camped uh, here down along the Big Hole River in Montana. This is Fly Fisherman's Mecca. This is a beautiful place. And uh, we're just in free BLM, in a free BLM campground for the night. I'm taking this opportunity to refill my water jugs. I'm still trying to find uh, um, opportunities to use this Hill RO um, filter, the battery, the rechargeable one. And so far, um, it's working really great. Uh, I wish I could find more opportunities to use it, but you know, it's still going good. We're not sure where we're going from here, but we never do know. We were heading, like we mentioned, we were heading to Phillipsburg, Montana. It's a beautiful little town. And up above Phillipsburg, there's a ghost town. I don't remember the name. Uh, it was a huge mine, mining operation. And you can still see the remains of the dance hall and the, all the, you know, and all the mining buildings and everything and, and a lot of homes that were there. Uh, all, all pretty much just foundations now, but we were going to take you there. So we heading up Montana Highway number one and we come to a sign that says Montana no, Montana number one closed for three days. So <laughs> the only other way to get to Phillipsburg was a couple hundred miles around the other way. So we had to bag that one. Uh, another, we'll do that another time. So from here, I think we're going over into Idaho, but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Coffee. Coffee. You. You're welcome. Again, good morning. <laughs> Coffee. Well, the bike rack is back on, all put together this time with a non-locking pin, just a just a regular hitch pin. Not taking any chances on that anymore. And I know there's some of you out there thinking, why don't you just put it in the put your bike in the trailer? Well, for example, the bike was all, the tires were all covered with mud and, it, and we had to carry it in the trailer to this place and it left a heck of a mess on the floor inside. So, nah, I don't want that. It's got to go out here. Hey, speaking of keeping the bike clean, uh, <laughs> we, we used one of you guys' suggestions and it really worked well. Uh, you guys came up with a lot of suggestions. If you remember some videos back, I, I did a, I showed how filthy the bike got on the back of the trailer and I asked for suggestions and man, you guys had some incredible suggestions. For example, somebody said, well, cover your bike really well and then put an air scoop on the top of the trailer and run a duct down into that bike covering so it pressurizes that cover. That'll keep the dust out. Two of you suggested that. You guys are real smart. You know, that would work. Um, so that, that one I did consider. Here's another one. Someone said, build a plywood box on top of this rack. A plywood box, maybe 18 inches high, 20 inches high, something like that, with a door on the, on the end that you can put your ramp down and drive your bike up into the box, close the door. Then put your bike cover over the bike and, um, see, and tape it or you know, fasten that lower covering to that plywood box. 
and, you know, keep the dust out that way. That was also a good idea. And then one or two of you ladies out there suggested something else. You said, take a couple of tarps and tape them up on three sides like an, like an open-topped envelope. And another, another one said, take an overly large tar tarp and fold it in half and tape up the sides. Then put the bike up on the rack, put the tarp up there, the, the envelope or the big bag, put the bike down in it and then roll down the top like a lunch sack and tie the top down or tape the top down. That's a really good idea. And I ended up doing something along those lines. So I took a 10 by 14 tarp, folded it in half lengthwise, so now it's approximately um, nine and a half by six and a half or so tall. And I only taped up one end. Of course, the bottom is sealed up because that's the fold, right? So now it's open on the top and it's open on one end. This worked. So what you do is you open it up and you put it on top of the bike rack. And then you roll the bike up onto it, make sure it's in the middle. And then all you do is pull it up and you roll up the back and you roll down the top. It worked perfectly. The bike showed up. We're at our campsite perfectly clean after miles of dirt. In fact, this tarp is all dusty, dirty. But the bike was spotlessly clean. There wasn't anything on it at all. Anyways, this is working just fine. I wanted to pass it along. So this is how it ends up. And uh, this is how I had it when we went into sheep camp. Yeah, it must have been about, I don't know, seven or eight miles of dirt road. And it, uh, it worked fine. Well, another thing is I had originally used Gorilla Tape to, to tape this roll down. But you can see it just immediately peeled the finish off the tarp. So now I've got it um, just tied down. It's just cinched around the middle. And we'll see how that does. It, it, right now it doesn't look like it's going to let it unfold or unroll. And on the back, same thing. I got it tied down. It's rolled up and tucked in back there. We'll just see how it does. If you look here, you can see that this hitch has that uh, anti-rattle attachment on it or whatever, and that's supposed to stop that uh, seesawing, but it doesn't. I mean, it does help. Uh, it helps like 75%, but it doesn't help entirely. Hello. Welcome to Linda's outdoor kitchen. Remember that burdock or gobo I Rick and I dug up the other night? Um, I cut them up. Like so. These are them. You soak them in uh, fresh water, clean water. After you cut them up like this. And then I also cut up some carrots the same way. And just for added color, I cut up some sweet uh, peppers and some pork. Us Asians love our pork. And I'm just waiting for the pan to heat up and then I'll put some oil in it. You know the old adage? Um, hot pan, coal oil. And it's a carbon steel pan. Which is supposed to be lighter than um, cast iron. Which is why I order this one but the handle is as heavy as a whole cast iron pan so there went my cutting out the weight and you season a carbon steel pan the same as you would a cast iron pan Um, soy sauce. Some sugar. A little bit of hot sesame oil. Now I probably do this all in the wrong order, but 
they don't care because it always it comes out the same. <laughs> so you know, it tastes good. See, and the pork is cooking up nice. Oh, and I got rice cooking in a little uh, 12 volt rice cooker. It's plugged into a power station. There you go. Some, I don't know what you call it, stir fried pork, rice, and some pickled um, kimchi type cucumbers that I made at home. Because we bought like three giant cucumbers before we left home and I had to do something with them. So, typical um, meal at home in Hawaii amongst a lot of families. And in our home, too. Well, I had spread the connectors on the alternator where the uh, exciter wires go in up here. And uh, we made it out of Sheep Camp and drove on into Butte. And the alternator light never came on again. And this is a couple days later and still no problem. So we're just keeping an eye on it for now. Well, as you can tell by the way we're dressed, it's getting a little cooler. In fact, it got down to about 40 last night. But in Wisdom... Montana, which is just another 30 miles down the road here. It went down to 20. 20. Yeah. And it, it snowed in the mountains last night, so it's tis the season. Yeah. And um, the mountains near home, the little belts got dumped on. They like, did. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Great Falls, uh, Beck Lynn said it was beautiful, and they were outside most of the day. Yeah. Nice and warm, so. But anyways, it's only October, and we plan on heading for Arizona around January, February, so we're stuck with this for a while. It's all right, though. It's a beautiful season. The fall is nice. Anyways, too much chatter here. Yeah, we've, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've enjoyed the beauty of this spot along the Big Hole River, but we're heading out this morning, and we wanted to end the video right here. And uh, You're still talking. <laughs> see you in the next one. Okay, ready? Yeah, okay, <laughs> right. bye. See you around. <laughs>